Thank you so much. I was 
be meditating and talking to the Lord. And I told God, I just don't want to come here just because we're friends. Amen. Amen. And I see him enough. We text enough. Because we're friends. And I didn't want to come just to get an offering. Y'all can send that to me. But I really wanted to come for a reason. And I did not want it to, to be just a generic thing. And I and in my assignment, I wanted to make sure that it was the proper assignment for today. And so get your Bibles. Because I want to talk to you about life today. I want to talk to you about life and there's a few passages of passages of scripture I want to lift up to you on today and and I promise you I'm not going to be long because I, I realize this I don't need to, to get up and talk long if you're ready to receive the word of God Amen. and even if you're not ready to receive the word of God I still don't need to talk long because God's word is right all by itself yes. So with, with your Bible, the book of Mark, the fifth chapter. All right, amen, sir, amen. <laughs> Somebody had to about that word. The 21st verse. It reads this way, it says, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship, until the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. All right. Hmm. Verse 35. While he yet spake, there came a king from the ruler of the synagogue's house, certain, which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tomb, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado, and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, but when he had put them all out, he take the father and the mother of the damsel and, and them that were with him and enter in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talakakumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of 12 years. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. I want to talk to you about life today. All right. I was, toward the end of the year, we were assembled for our midweek service. And, and as, as normal preachers and pastors do, before we get started, we have to ramble a little bit to get our bearings. And I was talking and I was sharing with the people uh, the, the, the calendar that was coming up and, and what we were going to do for the, the end of the year and the beginning of the year. And, and I felt God impress something upon me. And, and I said it in a different way than he told me to say it. There was a reason why. The reason was the last time I said it, Forgive me for using this vernacular. I know you're pastor, so forgive me for using this vernacular. But the, the, the last time I said it, all hell broke loose. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I did not want to go down that road anymore. Well, so okay. I said it in a different way. Different way uh -huh. 
and I got home the rest of that week and I was I was I was meditating and reading and 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 and, and trying to hear from God for, for that Sunday and the Lord told me I told you to say it a certain way. And I said then that I, 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 I made a pact with God because I told God I never want to be fired by him. Well, right. 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 Okay. <laughs> and so I, I said, okay, God, I will do it your way. And I got up that Sunday and I apologized to the church and I told them the Lord told me to tell you this. And he told me to tell them that life as you know it will cease to exist. Okay. That's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Come on. All right, sir. Come on. Life as you know it is going to cease to exist. I told you the first time I said it, all hell broke loose. Had a church split. Well. And the one that split was the one with, with the money. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And not only did they split us, but they, they, they tried to take the one that was remaining with them. Mm -hmm. Wow. For years, they would talk to them, trying to get them coerced them to come with them. Mm -hmm. And it took us about three and a half years to get over that. So I did not want to experience that again. That's why I did not want to say anything. But God said, Kenneth, tell the people, life as you know it will cease to exist. Let me hurry up because y'all y'all looking at me and, 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 and I, I, I need to do it. You're all right. You're all right. You're all right. You're all right. <laughs> I'm going to get back to Mark in a second, but let me let me take you to, to John right quick. John, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse, there's this guy who, 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 who Jesus really loved and, and Jesus had gotten word that he was sick mm -hmm. unto death. And, and Jesus said, okay, cool, ain't no problem. And then all of a sudden, Jesus says to the disciples, come on, let's go. We need to go see about Lazarus. He said, Lazarus is sleeping. We need to go see about him. And the disciples said, well, if he's sleeping, ain't no sense in us going. But he said, he said, I need you to understand that Lazarus is dead. Scripture says when Jesus got there, uh, uh, Lazarus' sister met him and said, if you had been here, uh -huh. yes, sir. my brother would not be dead. And Jesus says to them, he says, take me where he is. And they get there to the tomb and Jesus tells them to roll back the stone. And, 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 and let, me, let me talk to you the way we do in 2016 because somebody said, yo, Jesus, hold, wait up. <laughs> well, they haven't invented embalming fluid yet. All right, see? Come on. And all the spices that we packed in there with them, the, 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 the flavor, the savor, the smell is gone. And now all of a sudden you open it up, he's going to stink. Why do you want to do such a thing? I got to go back. Because in John 9, there's this guy who was sitting there asking for, for help. And the disciples said to Jesus, they said, who said that he was born blind? Was it him or his parents? Now I got, a, I got a problem with that because these disciples are asking Jesus if an unborn child had sinned. It's a well, problem with that, but anyway, anyway, and, and, and he said, he said who sinned, the, the, the boy or, or his parents? And Jesus said, nobody sinned, this, just, this, this was done so that the glory of God might be revealed. Uh -huh. Then Jesus does this, he goes and he spits on the ground. Got a problem with that. He spits on the ground and he makes some, some mud out, 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 out the, the, the dirt and the spit and he puts it on the guy's eyes. Now, my problem is this. When I was a kid, we used to say this to people. We used to say, say it, don't spray it. <laughs> and how are you going to put some spit uh -huh. on somebody? Uh -huh. But he makes, he, he, he could have took a bottle of water and poured it on the dirt and made some mud and put it on. But he spit on him and he put it on the guy's eyes. And, and then he tells the guy this. He says, go wash in the pool. Uh -huh. Here's another problem I have, y'all. Y'all forgive me. How are you going to tell a blind man? <laughs> <laughs> that you just put mud on his eyes to go wash. 
I'm fussing with Jesus. I'm saying, man, you, you done lost your mind. He's blind, number one. We don't have any sin our dogs here. They don't have the little stick that beats that maybe if you're not into something. So why are you going to tell a blind man? Well. To go wash in the pool. While I'm fussing, this guy gets up and walks. Mm. Jesus comes off the Mount of Transfiguration in Matthew 17 and accosted by an a, 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 a angry crowd. And, and in this crowd is a, is a dad who, who comes to him and he says, hey, look, uh, master, my son is, is, is a lunatic. He's sick, he's out of his mind. And, and oftentimes he, he tears at his body and he tries to throw himself in, in the fire and try to kill himself. And, and, and oh, thank you, God. Oh, that just hit me. Oh, oh. They hit me. And, and, and he said, he said um, I took them to your disciples. And they couldn't do nothing. And so, so could you please do something for me? Hmm. Jesus first, he rebukes the disciples. And, and I like what the message Bible says. The message Bible says he tells them that, that you have no sense of God. That's why you couldn't do anything, because you have no sense of God. And, and so he then tells the, the dad to bring the boy here. And as soon as he brought and brings the boy, he, Jesus speaks to the boy, and he speaks to that, that lunatic spirit, and tells it to leave, and the, and the spirit leaves. I got to keep going, because in that 20th verse, the disciples pull Jesus to the side, and they say, well, why couldn't we do it? And Jesus says, because you're not taking God seriously. That's the message Bible says, you're not taking God seriously. For if you had the faith of the grain of a mustard seed, you could say to the mountain, be thou removed, be cast and it shall be done. Right. Now we find ourselves back in Mark, the fifth chapter. Jairus, who put his status aside and went to Jesus because he taught against Jesus. He taught against the things of Jesus. He, he was a, he was a, a member of the synagogue, and they, and they didn't believe it, that Jesus was the Son of God, and so they always taught against him. And, and so he, he, he put his status aside, and he goes and, and he goes to Jesus and said, my daughter is sick. Could you heal her? Jesus gets to the, to the house, and the people say, she's dead. He tells them, get out of here. I need somebody that believes with me. My next to the last one, and my last one for now is, 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 is there in John the fifth chapter because Jesus is walking into the city and the city is called Bethesda and, 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 and in Bethesda there's, there's a citywide pool that is there and, and, and there's this guy who's been sitting there for 38 years and, and the special thing about this pool is that, 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 that certain time of the year an angel would come and would stir the water up and, 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 and whoever got into the water first when it was stirred would be healed. So this man had 38 times, at least 38 times to get healed, but he never got healed. And, wow. and Jesus walks up to him and says, do you want to be made whole? All right. Uh -huh. All right. Had a problem with this dude. Because instead, instead of him saying, yes, I want to be made whole, he said, he says, I have no man. Yes, sir. My problem is he's trying to he's trying to lay the blame on somebody else. Uh, for his healing and but I gotta come back to that later. Uh -huh. <laughs> but Jesus then says, doesn't ask him anymore. He just simply says, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. I got here this morning and I sat in the office and I asked. Pastor Juan, I said, what do you want me to say? What don't you want me to say? <laughs> he said, I want you to say whatever God tells you. That's right. All right. Amen. He said, if you mess up, I'll come back next Sunday and tell him what you meant. And then Pastor Jay came in and, and, and I asked her, I said, what do you want me to say? What don't you want me to say? She said, say whatever you want to say, whatever the Lord tell you, that's what you say. <laughs> well, what they did was they put you in the place of this man at the pool of Bethesda. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Go ahead, sir. Just close my Bible. <laughs> Because what happened with, with all of these, all of these scripture texts, what, what, what's there is simply this one simple thing. Everyone.
everyone has an encounter with Jesus. Uh -huh. And what they have is